Drop a couple of orbs as we do jump onto the rift before the dragon fight begins and then ult and stun to start the fight as opposed yeah. to trying to take someone out. Yeah, we've seen that more recently on, on the side of a support Syndra, but in the mid lane it is slightly different. But we are, of course, onto the rift, ladies and gentlemen. LGD on our blue side and Energy Pacemaker on our red side to start this one off. We'll see whether any funny business does happen early on. Of course, no really interesting item picks just yet. Yeah, and once again, just fanning out, no, neither team wanting to kind of invade, I guess, and take any early advantage. So just respecting each other. Knockups from supports do do that level one, and it looks like they will just be dancing around each other. Yeah, just sort of just fanning out. Even Amazing Jane Acorn just basically cuddling one another here in this top lane as we have a mild pause just earlier on. But there wasn't very much action happening just yet anyway. So let's talk about the lanes that are going to be coming through here. Aurelia Jarvan. Spawn. Um, when was the last time we saw this matchup in the top lane? Uh, I've actually been seeing it a little bit more recently. I think Jarvan is a fantastic top lane pickup. Mm -hmm. He has uh, the thing about Jarvan is you can build nearly every single tank or AD <laughs> item on it on him, and he makes it useful. Mm -hmm. uh, just because he gives himself attack speed from his E and armor shred from his Q, uh, it just means that Brutalize a fantastic pickup. If you're ahead, Hydra a fantastic pickup. But then because of the innate CC in his kit. And the way his passive works, if you build him pure tank, he also still does a fair amount of damage. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the Jarvan, fantastic, I guess, versatile flex top laner, does a lot well, does contribute to TP ganks also very well. Uh, Aurelia, on the other hand, has that standard, grab a couple of Dorans if you want to be uh, aggressive. If not, grab the Phage, get into a Trinity Force and Boots to as soon as possible. I actually think that Jarvan wins the matchup very, very handily early on. Mm -hmm. However, as it progresses, Aurelia starts to get away with some more persistent damage. Jarvan's advantage is his early game damage through that Q1 auto attack that we just saw. Yeah, we can see that. There we go. Jarvan's passive, passive actually works fantastically with these slight trades as well. As there's the Equilibrium Strike. TBQ's coming up to try and get something down. Bowler's going to be Flashed out of the way of after it hits, unfortunately. So that's a flash down. I think that Amazing J is still going to be okay, but definitely LGD, LGQ, LGD are going to be able to pick that one up. And LGD TBQ is a lot of letters in one name, just so you know, guys. Yeah, it certainly is. And it looks like that flash will be very important because that means that if Rengar starts anywhere near the bottom side of the jungle, which it looks like he is, he will be able to get up there nice and early for a gank. Yeah, we'll see whether they can capitalize on that one. Of course, Aurelia is fantastic at setting up these ganks, especially if you're a little bit lower than your opposing laner. That Equilibrium Strike, of course, stunning if you are at lower health. So Captain57, as well as LDQ, are starting on their Krugs. Their that, Krugs, exactly, yep. For that uh, passive stun that comes through. It does keep you a little bit more healthy. Of course, Grump gives you a faster clear time, however. Yeah, of course, adding a little bit more damage as we are going to have the bottom lane of Energy Pacemaker taking out that Gromp first up. They're going to have a little bit of an experience advantage here in this bottom lane and may hit that level two. But they are at risk of being shoved in. And when you get shoved in very, very early, it means that you can't auto attack because of how much green damage does come out. Yeah, and Imp utilizing that uh, ricochet auto attack reset just to get a little bit more damage down to the cane as well. I need to take that ricochet to push out this wave. Yeah, definitely. Does it for a lot less mana early on as well. Ooh, so Kane has hit level 2 now, though, but he's just too low to capitalize on. Yeah, and once again, it's because of how big the creep wave is. If they fight them anywhere near that creep wave, PYL oh, and Imp oh. will just do so much more damage. Ebb and Flow hitting three times for the heals and the damage just, just feels so good. Oh, Wayless actually taking a lot of damage in this mid lane, but Luo as well getting chunked down just a little bit. And this is what we were talking about, the fact that this mid lane is so volatile. Yeah, and it, 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 the beautiful thing about both these champions is it starts at level 3. As soon as these uh, <laughs> yeah. champions have all the abilities available to them in their kit, a lot of damage oh, to go out. Oh, wow, that was Wayless cool looking. Hitting the chain there for a little bit extra damage as we see Captain57 visiting this top lane after just clearing the top side of his jungle. Yeah, he's going to back away, though. Not going to want to actually go in on Acorn up here, which is interesting because Acorn pushed up relatively far. Yeah, and that was creep wave was absolutely huge. As I, I keep mentioning it, but creeps do so much damage, especially cannon creeps, that if they're actually not on the turret, then you take a lot of damage. And if they are on the turret, you, of course, want to pick up the CS and experience. So just not a good time to gank there. Yeah, we'll see whether he is going to come back around and really put the pressure onto the new Korean import here. As imp nice spell shield just to soak up that phosphorus bump. Ebb and Flow just going to give PYL a little bit of a Does take a turret, turret shot. Hit. 
And once again, Siva just pushing so hard, not worried about this gank whatsoever because they have that ward in the river. Just happy to push up, get an early CS advantage and put this Corky under pressure to farm underneath the turret. Yeah, and TBQ looking to try and make something happen here early on onto Luo. Syndra is playing back relatively far and does have that flash available, of course. So probably not going to be too successful. But if they get that summoner spell, that's going to be so important. I think this must be a counter gank because they are so far up that it's going to be extremely difficult to execute that gank without, uh, I guess, having to dive. And it does show with Rengar having to back off, go back to his jungle. That was a lot of time spent. Yeah, and Luo actually had that ward in the bottom side. So it was, of course, just fainting over there because he knows that there's definitely no Rengar going to come out of that particular yeah, spot Yeah, cheating towards that side of the lane that was watered. So good play, Adelo, in the mid lane. Acorn looks like he's farming up very nicely. Has a much bigger minion wave and is only one CS down now even. Yeah, just going to use that blade search. Of course, Aurelia is so good at farming under these turrets with that reset. A little bit of extra damage and has that flask. So not going to have too many of these uh, mana issues as well. Picked up a mana pot at the same time. So yeah, it's normally right. going for three of those uh, health potions normally, but wants to have that extra mana. The Damage that was done to the bottom turret already is a very worrying sign for uh, EP. That is, I think, below half health at the moment. And if that goes down any further, it will open up the whole map and just mean that LD, uh, LGD has the advantage of being able to roam around as a unit. Yeah, and we've been seeing... Oh, actually, as Kane gets very aggressive here in this bottom lane, has uh, Ruby Crystal and a Longsword to the pickaxe coming out of him right now. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about of... You saw the ping straight away that PYL had left. He's gone to get some deep wards. That's the jo uh, his job as a support to make sure that his AD carry safe. But why he's gone, he needs to make sure that Imp does play that careful role as we have Captain 57 looking for a gank on Acorn. Yeah, Acorn actually wants to get a ward down here by the looks of things, but Captain 57 seems to be wasting a fair bit of time. They're waiting for a blade surge, I, I think, up here in the top lane. Captain 57 is going to give up. Transcendent Blade's now available for Akon, and he's just going to use that to shove out this wave so he can head back, you know, let it reset. And, and this is why PYL's safety. wards were so important. They knew Captain 57 was not in the bottom side of the jungle. They knew he wasn't in the river either because of their ward coverage, so he must have been top. There was nowhere else he could possibly be, which means that they just can play away from the river on the top side, be completely free from any gank. Yeah, and it's really, really well coordinated as well with Akon in the top lane. As we do have a gank in the bottom lane, Flag and Drag, Imp gets knocked up. There's the exhaust, Cataclysm for the insta-kill. And that is going to be a double kill, actually, because Wayless fell down in the mid lane as well. Luo managing to pick that one up, almost dying for it as well. Yeah, had to use the ultimate there. Was burnt by both mid laners. And this is exactly what we're talking about in Champion Select. Teleport bottom lane, first blood, looking for a dragon straight away. Perfect play coming out of EP. Yeah, an energy pacemaker, like we were talking about earlier on, like you mentioned, the fact that they're playing this map and playing their rotations really, really beautifully. Looks like this first dragon is going to be taken uncontested. They have that pink ward. No timer is going to be available for LGD, of course. They probably know that this is going on, but the exact time is really important. Yeah, it certainly is. It means you can set up so much earlier. Now they have to get there. When they think it's up, they will, of course, cheat a little bit early to try and get some vision control. But that first blood is so important on Amazing Jay. He's gone back and picked himself up a pickaxe and a longsword. Maybe going for that early tier map. Yeah, looking to go with a tier map, potentially. And I'm excited by that. Having a damaged Jarvan coming out of the top lane, you don't see it all that much. You know, Jarvans tend to just be this sort of CC bot flagging and dragging around, but this time he's going to be cataclysming for a lot of damage, and that's why it was so surprising when he came down to that bottom lane. That cataclysm was just so huge on the damage front. Yeah, it definitely is a lot of upfront bursts, particularly if you land your Q first because of all the armor shred that comes through. So he's going back to the top lane, equal in CS still, although the wave is much bigger for Acorn as well as a kill under his belt, so he's sitting very nicely. Yeah, but does have a lot of damage, so doesn't necessarily have the extra health and, of course, the cloth armor available to Acorn, meaning that he's got a little bit more armor there as well, so still playing back from this wave. Yeah, and interesting enough, TBQ swapped out his uh, trinket for already a sweeper eight minutes in. However, Captain 57 has kept his, even though he has the option to, I guess, invest a little more into that side stone is looking to finish off his jungle item first up. Yeah, PYL actually going for the bubble. He's going to land on the cane here as well. They have a shield, but Imp taking a lot of damage from that Phosphorus Bomb. Boomerang Blade's going to come through. Kane goes very low, but I think he's going to be safe from this one. PYL, his bubbles look fantastic. Yeah, able to get that going on Nami. 
Heals back up to full health. This is a lot of pressure now on the bottom lane with Imp just relentlessly being able to push in, not knowing where TVQ is. And he is, of course, level six for that gank. And wow, Wayless getting chunked out once again in this yeah. mid lane. Lua actually using his full combo onto Wayless there. There's nothing Looks he can like really they're going to do. going to come back. There's Thrill Hunt being popped. The Flash coming out as well. Luo's got no mana. TBQ is going to be free. There's actually Scatter the Weak, but with no ball. There is the Mimic as well. And TBQ picks up the kill in response. First kill for LGD here on the map. Yeah, nice move from Captain57. However, going over and counter jungling away that buff. I think they suspect it's going on because of how amazing Jay did move down there in case he did need support. But now he's looking to 1v1 out TBQ. Maybe not. Just going back. Yeah, Bubble's not going to land here in the bottom lane. As uh, Shu is going to head back to that turret as well. Kane so low down here. Yeah, and the turret is just in danger of being taken on this wave because of all the early pushing that Imp, Imp did. Not only did uh, it pick him up a very decent CS advantage, already 20, and that's going to be another wave loss for Kane. It just did so much damage early on to that turret. Not to mention that Kane could only buy a Sapphire Crystal when he backs, so that's no combat stats being picked up by this Corky. Going to have a little bit more mana for those Phosphorus Bombs, but really for these trades and engages, it's not going to offer him anything. Yeah, and Kane, uh, sorry, Imp just pushing down that turret as fast as possible as the stun Oh, Wayless actually dodging out of the way of that Scatter of the Week with the Dark Spheres, and he's going to be safe here, but... Looking very dangerous with three members of Energy Pacemaker in the mid lane. Yeah, so Energy Pacemaker now looking to play around their mid lane. Amazing J has fallen 20 CS behind after he picked up that kill. So he's in a little bit of danger in this top lane, it looks like, of just being run over by Akon, who's controlling this wave beautifully, just ensuring it's pushing at every point. Yeah, 87 CS now to 69 here in this top lane. I think Amazing J might be paying for his really aggressive item choices. Yeah, I think it's more... Uh, control over the minion wave. When you say Acorn play, he makes sure that he's not last hitting so he's uh, until the very last moment, so it's always pushing in his favor. Of course, Jarvan a lot more AoE when he does harass with that Q and that flag. Yep. So it means that the wave is always going to push in Aurelia's favor and she can just f freeze so easily. And we can see that happening as well. That wave was nowhere near the turret and Amazing J is going to have to clear that one out before his tower does and he's going to back away as well. So top lane's going to reset. And our top lane is just heading back there as well. Acorn not going to have his teleport available for the next little while. As Thrill of the Hunt is going to be popped in full vision of Energy Pacemaker. TBQ. Oh, actually going to flash. There's the Empowered Bowler. Captain 57 here, though. There's the turnaround immediately evaporating TBQ. And that was so beautifully baited. Yeah, and that Syndra ultimate absolutely destroying the jungle. When yeah, you see someone respond like that, as there's a little bit of a scuffle in the bottom lane, you cannot choose to continue to go in. They'd obviously seen because they backed off at the perfect moment. Yeah, that was so beautifully orchestrated, and that Unleashed Power just did so much damage as well. But no equalizing up the turrets finished. now, looks like in the top lane, Amazing J has elected to go for those Ninja Tabai, so going to be mitigating a lot of Aurelia's auto attack damage, as well as finishing up that Tiamat, which means he will be able to shove out his wave so quickly to use this teleport around the map. Yeah, it does have that Ninja Tabi available. You can see Akon Transcendent Blades has been used, but Captain57 here again. Actually, Akon unable to get over that wall, but didn't actually use the flash. Just like he got stuck there for a second. There's going to be the Dragon's, uh, Dragon's Rage Kick and just sliced in the head. Yeah, a little kick. bit of a misplay out of Captain57 there. He had his uh, safeguard available as well as his smite, so needed to use one of them before he threw out his first resonating strike because that nearly cost him. Uh, Amazing Jay's life in that situation and meant they had to use a lot more resources to take out the kill. But in the end, they do pick up Acorn. Amazing Jay 2-0-0, so making up for the CS uh, disadvantage with some kills for himself. So he's still rolling in this top lane and that's who they need to get going if they're going to win. Yeah, and Energy Pacemaker have started translating their kills across this map into objectives as well. You can see Amazing J has shoved out this top wave as well. Akon unable to teleport back there, so he's going to lose a lot of CS to that turret. And now one death to the two kills on the side of Amazing J, easily making up for that CS discrepancy. Yeah, and Energy Pacemaker need to make their mo next move right now. They see that uh, they will see that Akon is moving into that top lane, and they know Dragon is now alive. His teleport is down for about five to ten more seconds. So they need to take it as soon as possible to make sure they have the advantage in this fight. Yeah, pulling out this dragon, it's so intelligent to start it off right away. Now already down to half health, and you can see the TBQ doesn't have Flash, unable to get over that wall. He's in full vision, they're going to take the second dragon so easily, and that's why it's so handy to deny the timer Ooh, from your opponent. As Captain57 nearly walked directly into Wayless, will try his luck again. 
Stonium away from that ward, able to pick up the pink ward. Akon will get the top turret, it looks like, but that's two turrets, very uh, two dragons very early in the game on the side of Energy Pacemaker. It certainly is, and actually Kane was forced out of that bottom lane in order to help with that dragon, so has fall, fell behind 40 CS down there. So Imp doing a lot of work. Only about a minute behind the timer as well. Th so. th this is a very well-coordinated team in Energy Pacemaker, making sure their map movements are crisp versus a team that is just solo beating lanes. Yeah. You can see how well Acorn and Imp are doing in their lanes. I'm sure PYL has a lot to do with that. The control over the bottom half of the map looks quite good, although they've lost two dragons for it. However, if the game keeps going this way, when you pick up objectives and turrets, you expect to get a gold advantage. If that doesn't happen, all of a sudden... LGD will just be able to pick up the first dragon of the game and then run over the top of these team fights. Yeah, and going to have exactly the same amount of worth of statistics while they do so as well. So, see whether they can capitalize. Wayless is someone that we haven't really spoken about unless they're getting killed in that mid lane, but we can see still up about 15 CS. Yeah, and as I said, this is a team with very, very strong individual carries in the mid and in the AD position. So, that's why they've brought in Akon, a little bit safer, or, although playing Aurelia will have a lot of damage this game. And wow, taking out Amazing J in the top lane, that was a very nice chunk of damage from Akon. Yeah, using that Transcendent Blades, and I think that Amazing J just wanted to get as much damage on that turret as possible. Didn't realize that Akon still does a lot of damage, has that Trinity Force Power Spike there as well. Captain 57 now waiting around, and we've got Shu up here as well on this janitor to offer his assistance. Yeah, so it looks like they're going to push this one out. We're maybe expecting a gank up in the top lane. That's why they rotated so many members. Or could be just waiting for Kane to come up here, be able to take that uh, turret with some long range and clear out the last, no, second last standing objective. Sorry, their bottom turret is still alive. Yeah, it is. And we've got actually way less there in the bottom lane. A little bit more mobility, able to get away from that bottom lane and help out his team a little bit faster than both of those bottom lane members. And they have started putting a lot of pressure now on the side of LGD. Yeah, but this, this is just going to be a trade, trading. and I feel that in the mid lane, they can take the turret just as quick, although it looks like Syndra now has made her way back there. So nice move in the end by Energy Pacemaker, taking up another turret for themselves and really denying the mid turret from uh, Imp. Yeah, Wayless is going to continue to do work down here in the bottom lane, though. So Energy Pacemaker will need to stop this at some point. You can see they're all sort of rotating through. The mid lane turret, as you mentioned, very low on health now. But Energy Pace make a force to react. And they've set up a trap Wayless here for Wayless. They're going in on him very, very quickly. Uh, does have that distortion available. And look at Amazing J actually halving Wayless's health already. It's going to be the slow from Janna, but of course that distortion just so powerful in yeah, escaping. Yeah, Wayless on uh, LeBlanc is so hard to chase down, and a lot of Jarvan's abilities can be left away from. So, oh, oh actually trying to distort his way into getting that blue buff as well. Very cute there from Logo, oh, though picking it up and just <laughs> denying <laughs> yeah. it. That was that was a nice move there coming out of uh, the mid laner from Energy Pacemaker. Yeah, I'll just hold on to this one for a moment. Looks like they're still able to defend this mid turret as well. So, slow play coming out of LGD, not willing to really force anything. They understand that they're slowly building an advantage on their AD carry, so they don't really need to accelerate the pace of the game. And you feel that late game, they just have such a good team. Probably. Yeah, in trying to get this tower down, it's actually going to use that spell shield in order to stop that sonic wave from connecting. Although I guess it technically did connect, but you can't do anything about it because it's going to get shielded, which isn't bad at all. And we can see as well, the gold entirely even, but we have to factor in the dragon. Yeah, two dragons over the side of Energy Pacemaker, of course. They were able to pick those ones up as Wayless looks to get maybe aggressive. No, just looking to farm out the wave. A lot of pressure being put on this mid lane. It looks like Amazing Jay's being caught out. Yeah, there's the bubble coming through as well, getting jumped on here by TBQ. And they need to be so careful. The oh, the tidal wave on. coming through for the extra slow there as well. It's a monsoon and a flash, and Kane get immediately exhausted. PYL's going to get evaporated, though, because Luo's found his way around the side. Bowler Strike's not going to land, but a nice trade one for one now on the side of EP and LGD. Yeah, but it's not done yet. They're able to take down the middle turret. Dragon is only a minute away, so look for them to rotate around, I guess, and try and set up some wards there. But no, they've set a LeBlanc way less back into the Ooh, bottom lane. Scatter not going to find its mark. Akon wants to try and get some work done on the start, but Imp finally going to be able to get this one. Doesn't have very much mana left, so they're not going to look to fight at all. And Wayless just wailing on this turret in the bottom lane. Yeah, so that was very smart play coming out of LGD. Recognizing they could take the mid turret without their mid laner. Just saying don't fight and send him down there to do even more damage, I suppose. Yeah, and 
Oh, actually, Luo, this could be his chance. Wayless as well. Oh, the chain not going to land. That would have definitely netted in the kill. Didn't use the ignite either, which would have been very, very close to kill range. However, what it has done is 38 seconds from a dragon completely chunked out. Quite possibly the strongest member on their team. Yeah, it was beautifully well done. Waiting for that scatter of the week to come out. And that's all of the CC available to Syndra in that trade. Way less almost managed to the kill. TBQ now going to clear out these raptors and just prepare for this dragon. They don't know the timer though, so still, I mean, they're not necessarily setting up at exactly the right times. 10 seconds now. And, oh, their spidey senses are tingling. We'll see whether they do yeah, manage well, to at least you get a ward in there. Scuttle Trap in full vision of a ward. You must think the dragon is coming up soon, and it Ooh. is up right now. TBQ actually forced to There's a Cataclysm on the three members. A teleport immediately coming in. Amazing J just gets taken out straight off the bat. It's making this into a 5v4. Akon gets stunned up, but not for long. Of course, that Ionian Fervor being fantastic in this situation in order to stop all of this CC from coming through onto Akon. And Aurelia, this is where you shine in these sort of skirmishes for the dragon, because no one's going to be able to stop you. Yeah, and wow, what a really nice pick up there. Amazing J went super hard as we have TBQ ulting in with a silver. Yeah, there's actually a flash into the blaze surge as well. Akon's so aggressive. It's a nice knockup, but TBQ is going to immediately take out Luo. And here's Shu getting just chunked. Imp going to get exhausted, and that's probably why Shu's still alive. But the dragon now going over to LGD. And what beautiful play, making sure that they just all collapse onto Amazing J and secure themselves the most important dragon in the, these early stages of the game. Yeah, certainly was. And I spoke a little bit about how their coordination will be very telling. That was beautifully done. The ultimate coming out as the flash came over the wall. We spoke about how AD and top doesn't really have much to do does with each other. Way. Was right there with the Rengar <laughs> ulting as well. But for me, PYL's ultimate, that tidal oh, wave beautiful. that came across was absolutely perfect. Split one member to the right, hit the other three. Probably the perfect Nami ultimate in that situation. Yeah, it was wonderful to see. We'll see where the energy pacemaker can come back through. Of course, we did mention the fact that they want to be picking the fights that are already in their favor. And these 5v5s probably not going to be working out due to the individual and mechanical skill of these LGD members. Yeah, I don't think they want a 5v5. I think they want to try and drag Acorn around the map and then get Amazing J to teleport a little bit earlier and start the fight off in their favor. We've seen it a couple of times already with Amazing J. Frustrating what they want. Very, very well as we are back into this game. Acorn back in the top lane and Energy Pacemaker just going to head back and do some shopping. Kane out of mana and that is not a good thing for a cork. He likes his spells a fair bit. Yeah, he has been able to, I guess, equalize the CS disadvantage he's picked up. It was 40 CS quite early and it hasn't really grown from there. He has picked up those Sorcerer Boots as well as the Trinity Force now. So on that really nice two item power spike, However, Imp in the mid lane must be very close to his static ship. He certainly must, of course. Hasn't been back since that last skirmish, I don't believe. It's PYL just hanging about here. They haven't spotted that ward there in the banana brush. And these wards that Energy Pacemaker have been putting down in the mid lane have definitely netted them a lot of information. Yeah, and you can see that LGD has been content to play passive the game because of where their pink wards are positioned on the bottom side of the map in the entrances of their jungle. They're not pushing them up any further, just trying to keep advantage of exactly where they can control their, uh, I guess, their part of the jungle. And it's really been paying off for them because, as I said, they've just been solidly winning lanes. Yeah, and I think that that's a testament to how well Energy Pacemaker played the early stages of this game. I mean, they put LGD on the back Ooh, foot, but it looks to me like a change setting up a gank. No, Ooh, just letting him yeah. wander past there. Yeah, Akon's going to see Amazing J up here as well. Wayless might decide to head to this top lane. You can see there's the Equilibrium Strive coming in as well. Transcendent Blade's coming down. Amazing J, you are in a lot of trouble, buddy. But flag and drag into the flash, and he is safe. You were talking about the fact that Jarvan can cover a lot of distance. We just saw exactly that. Yeah, and he has managed to pick up a couple more tanky items now, so he is able to survive a little bit of punishment, although Wayless went so deep for that. Oh, my goodness. The shield from Shu was beautiful. Oh, there's Luo's coming in here as well. The chain's going to land from Wayless. Going to stop Luo from coming in, and Akon's going to take a Sonic Wave, but Captain57 does not want to engage That was it. two versus five, and they gave up complete control of their mid lane. That's disaster for EP not being able to pick up anything, because, oh, the teleport's coming in from Amazing J. This could really turn it. No, the split. Yeah, Imp actually walking over a ward here, though, and if he goes down, Amazing J might be able to catch onto him. Going to use that on the hunt, but there's a Cataclysm. That's going to stop him from being able to do anything. No flashes available, and 
He's gonna have to wait for that counter to the button. Look at the tidal wave, that was beautiful. And came the exhaust from PYL was wonderful, saving him's life. And the kick, there's the Sonic Wave as well. And PYL staying away from his AD carry. There's the Evan Flow coming in as well. Safeguard over the wall as Akon does come in to lend his hand as well. And my gosh, that was a beautiful passage of play by the support player of LGD. LGD plays so confidently, and there you, yeah, PYL nailed that team fight once again as Wayless is looking for the strag stragglers, I guess. Um, but yeah, that the confidence. Imp beautiful. knew that he could sit there, get some auto attacks off, knew his support and his jungler was, were going to arrive in time. The exhaust was so clutch. Out onto Kane there, definitely saved Imp's life. And, to expend that much to get a good initiate with a teleport, but not be able to pick up anything, just shows how in control LGD are of their own playstyle at this point. Yeah, not to mention the fact that I, I just can't fathom PYL's ability to play this game. The, the way that he was reacting to everything that was going on in that team fight was just beautiful to watch. Yeah, and the static shift now has been picked up by him, so he has that nice two item. Spike with a little bit more crit and the upfront magic damage that can come out. Of course, Siva doing some nice burst damage yep. with that boomerang blade. Kane looking for that Ch almost Chinese exclusive second item um, Blade of the Rune King on Corky that we don't see as much in other regions. Of course, there are people that do pick that one up, but definitely a staple here in this region. Yeah, it, it, it comes down to the dual potential and being able to auto attack with. They do like to try and get maximum damage through that. Uh, not putting as much value, I guess, on that big uh, upfront IE crit with a Sheen proc yep. um, that can come through, but definitely does work out when they do go into these duels, and they the lifesteal and extended fights can't be undervalued. Yeah, Akon has pushed out this top wave as well, and another thing I'd like to mention is a Sunfire K pickup here by Amazing J. does have that Kindle Gem as well for a little bit of cooldown reduction, but Sunfire K, I mean, it's an interesting item that we don't see as much from... Uh, tanks wanting to build a tank item. Why do you think he would have built this item in this case? I, I think it's... Uh, first of all, Sunfire Cave generally is just an outright bad item. He already has <laughs> pushing ability, so he doesn't need it for that. The magic damage that comes out later on when people start build, picking up magic resist, which already has started on three members on LGD's side, just mitigates that part. It's because he wants to have as much mid-game power as he possibly can. That item in five six minutes will be completely useless. He needs to win a team fight with it right now. Yeah, we'll see whether he can win that team fight. As Thrill the Hunt has been popped by TBQ. Doesn't really quite know where he wants to go with it. And actually Kane might be Ooh. in trouble here. Immediately TBQ does get exhausted. The tide away from over the wall there as well. There's going to be the bubble coming over. Amazing Jay gets caught in that one, but look at all that damage. Imp is just free hitting on everyone. Going to flash out of the Cataclysm almost before it lands. A triple kill already before he falls down. Captain 57 is going to fall as well, but not after taking down TBQ. And that is going to be an ace for LGD. Beautifully executed team fight. Yeah, Wayless and PYL definitely getting that fight going over the wall after the strong initi initiating coming out of uh, the Rengar. But wow, in a choke, double distortion does so much damage. It's ridiculous. That mimic distortion just ripped that team apart. And they were they were stunned up. I mean, it was a beautiful Zonis Hourglass from Luo in order to stop a lot of that CC, but it just was not enough. And to have him free hitting with the ricochet over the whole team during that entire fight, I think he got trapped in the Cataclysm there a little bit as well, um, sort of in the wall of the Cataclysm with the Flash. But beautifully well done by LGD, and this is a team to watch. Yeah, and Imp is going to enjoy playing on this team so much because there are so many threats. There are no way people can just sit there and focus him down with Wayless playing this way on an Assassin. He is a very big threat at this point in the game. Picked up his Rabidon, is 117, so not necessarily getting the kills for his team, but is just outputting so much burst damage. Oh, and Alacrity and Champ being picked up here from Imp as well. So wants to have as much movement speed as possible. And actually the synergy with that one. Oh, as we've got Alacrity across the board on these guys. Yes. In fact, Akon picking it up as well. Yeah, so Akon's picked that up as well. Hoping to stick as much as possible to possibly Kane on that Corky or whoever he can just get onto at the start of that. Of course, Aurelia counts on that attack speed and the movement speed to be able to output so much of her damage through that W, that Heat 10 style. As we see, Amazing J back to split pushing. His teleport will be up quite soon. Uh, so he's trying to get the last outer turret on the map for his team.
And I think as well that On the Hunt gives you percentage movement speed when Alacrity and Shank gives you flat, so you get a little bit more from it when that ultimate is available as well. So you're a little bit of extra synergy. I'm not entirely Max, sure. <laughs> as we come through that part of the game. As we have another ultimate being burnt, but no one in the vicinity, so this one may be wasted. Yeah, it just wants the thrill of the hunt, I believe, at this stage. Oh, that one was just bad. Yeah, that was terrible. But they got On the Hunt and Thrill of the Hunt in the same game. I mean, man, it's just ridiculous. Okay, five members strong of... EP, actually four members, as we do have Jarvan backing here in the bottom lane, but he does have that teleport. It could be five members here in the mid lane, but Energy Pacemaker sort of just milling about, not knowing quite what to do next at this stage of the game. Yeah, I think they recognize that they can't force a fight. They're able to pick up a, dra uh, a turret down in the bottom lane for free. However, if they were to fight right now, it would be definitely in the advantage of <laughs> LGD, as we have Wayless. Putting on a tutorial of how LeBlanc's W works. Yeah, it is. Uh, I've definitely learnt a lot that you can do it three times in a very short space of time if you've got that much cooldown reduction. Of course, Merlinomicon offering him a lot, and of course, the blue buff is going to give him and 40%. And he's chosen to pick up a haunting guys due to the lack of, I guess, wow, as he goes in on Amazing J. Oh, lands the chain as well before he manages to flag and drag out. He's going to pop. <laughs> his locker to the Iron Solari there as well as the Cataclysm gets dodged out of the way. Here's the 1v1 that we're looking for. Does get the stun up, but all gonna flash out of the way as well. Wants oh. to come in. That Helen Gale was amazing. The flash for the auto attack, and Amazing J picks up the kill. And that, wow, the support play from both these teams is The beautiful. complete disrespect from Wayless there. That was a 2v1. He could have just got out of there as easy as he would like, but it does lead to a turret in the bottom lane, so not all bad for LGD. Oh, PYL in a bit of trouble, and Imps here as well. PYL was there, I think, at some point. So the Hunt's been popped, but Luo's not going to worry about that one too much. And Teleport coming Ooh. through. Not getting the stun on the Scout of the Week. Teleport's going to come from Amazing J. And they're just going to head towards this inner turret. Yeah, so a little bit of a, I guess, misplay there from the LD. LGD lineup. They are going to start up Baron on the side of EP as well with absolutely no vision, although they call it off straight away. Look how much damage that guy does. Oh, here. Akon has come through from around the side here. The Valkyrie is going to come through. Oh, Akon trying to get his way out. Look at how tanky he is in five members and he's still not dead. So I don't know how he lasted that long. That was ridiculous. But a bit ridiculous that it was in the middle of five members of the team on his own in the first place. So not exactly the most intelligent play by the LTD top laner, but Akon just flexing his muscles a little bit. Yeah, so that is EP picking up another kill. They are 5,000 gold behind, but they're still able to get the picks when they would like them. Dragon is two minutes away. Both teams will make that next priority because it just means so much at this point in the game, 31 minutes in. Yeah, of course, both teams now on two dragons apiece. Looking to try and get to that ultimate five dragon mark where you get what I would liken to the old Baron buff. It's giving you a lot of extra stats, doubling everything else that dragons are using. Yeah, and Scuttlecrab being picked up around this Baron area. It's so Scuttlecrab's vision is so key because it can't be removed. So as soon as you get it, you know that you have that period of time where no one else can remove your vision of that area. Pickwood will be cleared out. And once again, five members strong from EP in the mid lane. Acorn's still coming back, so they're looking to catch someone out right now. Ooh, Captain 57 looking for the Sonic Wave. Doesn't quite manage to make it land. Through the Hunt's been popped yet again. Acorn in amongst three members once more. Tidal Wave over four members as well. Amazing Jay getting taken down so low. He's going to fall. It picks up that kill. That's another pick. That's double kill now for him. The kick was beautiful from Captain J. It's going to try and flash out, but the last stick of the chain is going to land onto him. TBQ now has found Luo, and he's just going to get left on here as well. Another ace for LGD and a perfectly orchestrated fight. The Tidal Wave and Lee Sin kicks in the, that fight were both perfect for their team. Started off the fight once again with Acorn just running in, understanding how much damage he can take. Great Tidal Wave to follow it up, but then Captain 57 getting a kick to potentially save the team fight was so close on a knife edge at the end, but in the end, LGD will be able to pick up this Baron and just catapult themselves up into a very big lead, 8,000 gold. Yeah, and now with the Baron buff as well, so, so much more siege potential coming out of these guys. And if they ever get a pick onto someone, you could just imagine that Energy Pacemaker is just going to lose their whole base. Yeah, definitely are, especially with how much damage is coming out of Imp at this point. He has picked himself up another BF sword, so he's got that, I guess, trifecta with the Infinity Edge, Last Whisper, as well as the Static Shift, now going for a Bloodthirst, I would suspect. And PYL's build is just so team-oriented. He's now going for that Locket of the Eye and Solari. Has already got the Mikhail's Crucible. Yeah. As Acorn just gives zero cares. 
Yeah, he doesn't really mind about anything. He realized before that he barely gets touched as a thriller hunt has been popped yet again, and that's going to be the Ty Caller's Blessing. Just give him that extra speed up. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful scout of the week. But Luo's still going to get Blade Surge. There's going to be the exhaust on a TBQ, probably not the optimal exhaust target. And here's on the hunt. They're saying go at this stage. Amazing Jake trying to tank up. Luo Imp is going to take away Luo. Straight away, I'm not even, I didn't even notice. Akon now tanking up multiple turrets under here. And this is the stage when you know that that Aurelia is way too big, when he just walks wherever the heck he wants. Yeah, and that will be another dragon on the side of LGD. They oh, Wayless it. actually going very aggressive here. Doesn't manage to land the chain, which would have netted in the kill. But that is really going to chunk out Captain 57. And with only two members available, that inner turret is definitely going down. This Baron buff being put to great effect already. Yeah, so recognizing how long the death timers are at 35 minutes into the game, Amazing J still has 20 seconds, so they may even be able to pick up an inhibitor for themselves, as well as a dragon, although they've already sent two members there. So it will just be the turret but I have a feeling that they will be visiting that part of the map very soon. Yes, you could definitely imagine that way less. They help out TBQ securing their third dragon of the game. And it's looking to me like this 11,000 gold lead is going to be very hard to surmount for Energy Pacemaker. Yeah, and LGD are just relying on Acorn and Wayless to jumping in people's faces and Energy pa Pacemaker realizing that they have to hit them to be able to yep. get them off. That Aurelia is so sticky with that uh, uh, Ranuan's Omen as well as the Alacrity enchant coming through, just going to be able to do so much work on the back line that if they don't turn around and deal with her, with the On The Hunt coming through, just so much engaged potential. Yeah, is Akon looking to build potentially a Warmog drama now? Because that would be very scary. That's a lot of health for an Aurelia. Yeah, it definitely is, and a lot of health regen that comes through from that item. Already at about 4,000. So... Looking very, to very now big. push down mid lane. Jungler is still at his wolf camp, so we'll have to go slow in case they do get engaged on, but they will join up, and this may be the first inhibitor of the game. Yeah, Baron probably doesn't have this too not, much This won't to go. maybe be the first inhibitor of the game. This will be the first inhibitor of the game. <laughs> they will push here, no problem at all. <laughs> they didn't happen to sneak one that we missed earlier on. Pink Ward's going to be put down. That may just slow LGD down, though, at this stage, as another ward gets placed just to tempt them a little bit. Thriller Hunt is popped though. Safeguard is going to be onto Amazing J. The inhibitor is the focus as Akon goes aggressive. Wayless, oh, oh wow. my goodness! That mimic distortion damage was absolutely ridiculous. Another fantastic tidal wave. Look at the blade surges. Oh, oh that's a little bit of an unfortunate use of the monsoon. Going to get the AD carry killed. And LGD, it doesn't matter. They are going to take down these Nexus turrets. And what a beautiful passage of play for those last few minutes. Yeah, it definitely was. They understood exactly where they were in the game. Even though they gave up a couple of early kills and objectives, which is confident in their ability to outlane their opponents and pick up a very decisive win in the end. GG, LDG taking away the first one. Yeah, LGD.